you are going to absolutely love today's guest on hashtag rise and grind let's go good morning and welcome to hashtag rise and grind i am your host glenn lundy i am a husband to one a father to seven and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world it is 5 30 a.m and i hope that you are ready to rise and grind good morning good morning good morning how are you my friend how are you my friend i am so incredibly excited to bring to you our guest today holly homer she's waiting in the green room right now i'm going to bring her in in just a second but for those of you what is going on here my stuff is acting crazy but today is friday november 1st 2019 that's right today is friday november 1st 2019 and what's crazy is today is the very first and very last time it will ever be friday november 1st 2019 so i want to make sure we make the absolute most of this absolutely incredible incredible day wow what a month october was just crazy right what a crazy month and it just flew by i can't believe we're already sitting in november halloween is gone the christmas decorations are going to start to break out worldwide you're gonna christmas music is going to start filling your ears and your showrooms and your retail outlets and stores all around america it's going to be crazy like we're 29 days 29 days away from Black Friday, right? Can you believe that? 29 days from Black Friday, which Black Friday, of course, is a special day here at Hashtag Rise and Grind Studios because we're getting ready to release next year's planner, the 2020 Rise and Grind planner. We've also got a whole new Rise and Grind gear line that's coming out. And then, of course, there's a top secret launch that I can't tell you about but it's super exciting and that's going to happen on Black Friday as well. So that's just 29 days away. We're also 61 days away from the new year. Can you believe it? 61 days away from 2020. It's so crazy. I remember when people used to make movies about 2020 and flying cars and what all that looked like. And here we are approaching 2020. So as we go into today, I want to ask, I want to ask you a quick question. How has your year been? How has 2019 treated you? How's it been for you? If 2019 has been a great year for you, then I want you to continue. Keep pushing. We got 60 days left, right? 61 days left. Keep on crushing. If 2019 has been a tough year for you, you still have time to turn it around. We still have time to make 2019 the best year of your entire life. And listen, today we have Holly Homer on the show, a.k.a. the Quirky Mama. That's right, the Quirky Mama. And she has made a massive impact on this planet, not just this year, but over the last few years. She's been writing and she's been speaking. She's been traveling and coaching all over the place. She's absolutely crushing it. And she has been serving her 3.4 million followers that she has on her Facebook page, Quirky Mama. She's also written some books. She wrote 101 Kids Activities that are the bestest, funnest ever, which I love that title. She also has the 101 Coolest Simple Science Experiments, which I'm going to have to get that for my seven children that I've got there at the house. And most recently, she released a book called 101 Kids Activities that are the ooey, gooeyest ever these titles are amazing and so we're gonna bring her in here in just a second but before we do you know what we gotta do over here. let's dance my friend how about this song yes that's it that's my man tony with the key. wake up wake up that's like super loud my headphones stay well stay well stay well hold on that's that rising grind that's that rising grind first thing on my mind early in the morning time baby motivation clear that Woo. <laughs> That'll wake you up first thing in the morning. <laughs> All right, listen, for those of you that know, and those of you that don't know, this is the part of the show where I need you to hit that share button. That's right. I need you to hit that share button because I believe 
If we can change the way people start their day, it'll make a massive impact on this planet. I truly believe that. And sometimes all it takes to change the way that people start their day is for you to hit that share button. This is also the part of the show where I want you to say good morning to me, and I'm going to say good morning to you. Whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay, say what's up, and I'll say what's up back. Good morning, Jeremy Nolan. How are you? What's up, Kendra Cooper? Sarah Ball from overseas. Hope you're doing well. How you doing, Jeff Baker? Eric Willeroy is in the house. Jeff Baker, I hope you finish strong, my man. What's up, Dana Fishbean, Tabby Negret, Whitney Wells? Whitney, I got to message you later. I need your help with something. How you doing, Laura Berman, Mike Hubbard, Rick Tamburino, Tracy Shepard's up in here, Terry Collins, Rachel Flaherty, Kim Wilson, Kara Jackson, Vicky Everett, Janelle Griego, and of course, Josh. Oh, what's up, John Coltonborn? John dressed up as P.T. Barnum yesterday for Halloween. It was amazing. Hi, Brandy Elliott. You've been killing it, and your daughter has been crushing it as well. Great to see you in here. How you doing, Gail B. Craft, Carrie Lynn Carter, my good friend, Joanna Cooper. Hamilton, Michael Sanchez, and many, many, many more are up in here on Hashtag Rise and Grind this morning. My friends, as you know, whenever we bring a guest on this show, it's super, super important that we honor that guest as best we can, get as many people up in here watching this awesome, what's going to be an awesome episode of Hashtag Rise and Grind, because this young lady that I'm about to introduce you to, Miss Holly Homer, I mean, she is a blogger. She writes these books. She's got these millions of fans that are following her on Facebook, and she serves them every single day. She's this massively incredible human being, and I'm so excited to introduce her to you. Holly Homer. How are Good you morning. this morning, young lady? I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for getting up bright and early. I know it's 4.30 in the morning over there in Texas, and you look like you're ready to like go out on the town. Well, I mean, you know, you invited me on the show. What am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Holly, you've been doing amazing things. Like truly amazing things. You've had a lot of success. You do a lot of writing, right? Like you do <laughs> blogging for all over the place, thousands of different <laughs> blogs and stuff that's out there. So you've had tons of success. You've been serving parents all over the world, right? Yes, serving, definitely. Definitely serving kiddos all over the world. Yes. Getting them covered in slime and science and all that. Keep fun them stuff. dirty yes. and playing. <laughs> <laughs> you keep them dirty and playing. My wife, I was thinking about it. My wife is going to be, because we have seven seven kids and six of them are 10 years old and under. And I was like, man. It's amazing. I was like, you got to meet, you know, Holly Homer. And she's looking at the slimy stuff. She's like, we're not doing like, Oh, no. <laughs> No, throw them in the backyard. <laughs> That's right. Throw them in the backyard. Let them play. So you've been serving parents. You've been serving kiddos. And you've been very, very successful at that. Now, I am a student of successful people. I love to study. I love to learn. That's one of the reasons I'm so excited you're here because you and I are, are in a lot, a lot of the same spaces on mm -hmm. a lot of different things. And so as I study success and successful people around the world, I tend to find that they all have good morning routines, like great ways that they start their day. And so us, this being a morning show, I was hoping maybe you would share with us, what does your morning routine look like? How do you start off your day? Well, I have a great morning routine today, <laughs> but it wasn't always that way. Right. <laughs> In fact, you know, when I started the blog 13 years ago, I had three kids under the age of five. So um, my morning routine was about survival right. <laughs> <laughs> and making sure everybody was fed and, you know, the, the house was in relative, you know, not disarray. But for the most part, it was just about survival. And then as my kids have gotten older and they can get up and do things for themselves, um, you know, I've been able to concentrate more on what I want to do. And I think that's super important when you're running a business, because especially when you're running a business from home. Uh -huh. Because it's so easy to work 24 hours a day. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and so what I love about um, having a morning routine is it starts the day without work. And I think that's like gives you some space to, um, you like know, to that. think. Yes. 
So uh, I do not even look at my phone or any electronics until it's, I have a team meeting with my team at 9 a.m. And that's when, that's when the first time I get on the computer or, you know, open up any electronics. And before then, I get up at, um, well, it depends, at like 5.30 because I go to a 6 o'clock Pilates class. Uh -huh. And then when I come back, and before that, I drink like an obsessive amount of water. <laughs> <laughs> right. In fact, I'm getting my coffee much earlier this morning than normal. Um, and then when I come back, I have, I sit down with my breakfast. Um, my husband, thank goodness, has, is able to get the kids off to school and stuff like that. We partially homeschool. So some days that they're just in, the kids are in bed, but some right. days they're getting up and going to school and my husband takes care of that. Sure. And then, um, so I get to sit down quietly with my breakfast and my coffee and my reading, and I just get to read for a good 45 minutes before I have to start the day. And I think that just kind of grounds me and motivates me to just go on and do what I need to do. Because I think our brains are wired to talk ourselves out of these ideas. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> No doubt. So to have that kind of that, you know, encouragement in the morning to like that you can do this, like don't let <laughs> don't let society talk you out of this. Keep going. I think is really, really important. Yeah, I think that that that's that's beautiful. And you touched on so many aspects that I consistently see with a healthy morning routine, right? Like taking care of ourselves physically is a consistent part of a morning routine. It's super, super important. But the words that you said were you start the day without work. I love that. Start the day without work, like no PC, no electronic, no going out into the world until about 9 a.m. And I share some of those things similarly, right? I don't touch my phone first thing in the morning. That's one of my, my morning fives. Uh, I do get on social pretty early, 5.30 a.m. <laughs> um, we'll do give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> but then after my show, I kind of shut off for a little bit. I'll respond to some comments and then I shut off from 630 and I start my day around nine as well. So I love that. I love that, that phrase, like start the day without work, because it's really easy for go getters and motivated people to jump right into work, right? It's so true. We, well, we love what we do. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so it's kind of a double edged sword that like you could work day and night and be happy, but the point is, is we do, we need to separate that to a certain extent or, mm -hmm. or it does take over our life to a level that I think all of us have experienced that are now backing up a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. And mm -hmm. I also like how you pointed out, you know, that peace and solitude in the morning is really what we need to create that space, right? That, that space so that we cannot talk ourselves out of the, the, the things that we need to be doing, but actually spend that time creating new ideas and moving towards them. I love that, man. That's, in, that's incredible. So how old are your kids now? So I have three boys and they are 13, 16, and 18. 13, 16, and 18. So you're on the backside. I am in, getting towards the promised <laughs> land. <laughs> At the promised land. I love it. My wife and I, my wife has been pregnant or breastfeeding for uh, 10 straight years. My God, yeah. I feel for her, girl. It's been 10 straight <laughs> years. It's been crazy. And so she, uh, yesterday, her and I, oh, I lost my camera. Yesterday, her and I had lunch together in the middle of the day for the first time without like a child in tow for the first time in 10 years. It was insane. That's amazing. Yeah, no, you have to, <laughs> you absolutely have to. And it gets easier and easier every year. But um, that's something that my husband and I love to do is go to lunch because lunch is cheaper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the middle of the day, like when there's the restaurants are empty. And um, it's just, I don't know, it's just, a, it's a, lunch is a good thing. Lunch is Doing a lunch good with thing. your spouse is awesome. I agree. I agree. All right, Holly. So you've got three books, right? Three that I saw. <laughs> you maybe, maybe have more, but three that. It... No, three's enough. <laughs> okay, three's enough. It looks like you've been doing a book about every two years from, from what I could see. So you've got three, three books. You've got this crazy three and a half million followers on Facebook page on the, the quirky mama Facebook page. That's Q-U-I-R-K-Y. 
mama, right? Those of you that those are my fans that are here in the South, they're used to that mama. So, <laughs> uh, so you've got three books, you've got this crazy Facebook page, you're speaking, you're coaching, you're traveling, etc. I want to go back in time just a little bit and ask you a question. So mm -hmm. like, what was step one? for you how did you start on this path if we have someone that's watching this morning someone that's they've got some creative ideas or maybe they they don't necessarily love what they're doing they're not finding that fire or that passion but they don't know what step one is like you're here but what was the very first step that got you on the <laughs> path that you're on today the, this this here is <laughs> just it feels still like here yeah. and the thing is is it is just doing like <laughs> all of this happened not because i have any skills like i i graduated with a degree in physical therapy <laughs> so <laughs> i while other people were learning how to write <laughs> i was i was in a science lab and so it this is completely you know, like just self-created and through like basically grinding and learning and figuring it out. Yeah. And, you know, 13 years ago when I started blogging, like blogging was just getting to be a thing. Like there were no rules. Like if there was, there wasn't even things you could Google back then. Yeah. <laughs> and so thankfully I was able to find a really amazing, you know, community of bloggers that we would share. Like, you know, someone make a blog button and like everybody would get super excited because now we all know how to make a blog button. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, someone learned how to make a blog roll. So we all learned how to make a blog roll. And so that community of, you know, of women, of, of moms that were blogging about our everyday life uh, were, was really the foundation for, and so many of them have achieved amazing things by just doing it every day. And like, I can't even, t like, I think baby steps, like doing something every day is like the compound interest of, you know, of life. Mm -hmm. Like if you just do something every single day, even if it's for five minutes, mm -hmm. you, I can't even express to you. I mean, like, it, like it, it works. <laughs> I'm a, you know, I have no special skills. I have no pre, like I am the worst tech person in the world. Just ask my husband. <laughs> so the fact that like people are like trying to get tech advice from me, I'm like, uh, I feel like you don't understand how I got here. Right. Sure. <laughs> I just got online every day mm -hmm. for 13 years. And this is where I ended up. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's just amazing. And, and people, the other thing I would say is people are searching online for connection and they're searching for positive connection. Mm -hmm. And so if you're offering that online, that makes you stand out in the crowd like to a ridiculous level, which is almost frightening. <laughs> but I leverage agree. that frightening. because because most people are coming onto Facebook and coming onto Instagram and Pinterest and finding negativity and, you know, and picking fights mm -hmm. and making judgments. And that, uh, it just, it hurts my heart because that's not the world that we want to live in. That's right. Like the world that I want to live in is where everybody is so excited <laughs> to see each other and learn from each other and rise together. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And you touched on quite a few things there. I hope people don't miss that. I love that you, you, you mentioned that you started in community, right? You started in a community, lifting each other up. Somebody figures something out. We share that with so-and-so, so on and so forth. We're big fans of community around here in the Rising Grind group. We understand the power in that. And then you also touched on the power of just every day right? Just every single day, do it over and over. It's like John Maxwell says, right? The power of five. If we're just swinging an ax five times a day at that tree, at some point, we're going to chop that sucker down. Right? It's so true. And I want to encourage those of you who only have one chop at the ax that day, go for it. Yeah. Because <laughs> there are days when life happens, especially if you're dealing with small children, you like you may get half a swing in and that's good you're still practicing that swing right beautiful compound interest of all of that building up over time right that's the that's the big win this week the other thing that you touched on is actually perfectly in line with what we've been talking about this week 
So on Sunday, I was in church and my pastor said something powerful that resonated with me. He said, people are hungry for that which unites us and tired of that which divides us. And so this week that gave we, me chills. Yeah. I mean, it's so true. It is so true. And it's such, you know, it's, 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 it's like you said, it's, it's frightening that we're at that point where people are just starving for the positive things that unite us because there's so much division out there. And so I'm glad you touched on that. You are connecting people around the world right now that's that's something that you do you make sure to engage you're connecting people in different countries and like you know you've got this global platform so what has that experience been like for you being able to connect people of all different shapes and sizes from all over the globe how has that affected and changed your view on life well you know at first we didn't even understand what we were doing you know we were just you know you know, trying to, you know, trying to express what we wanted to see online. And, um, and it was really funny that like one of the reasons um, that the Facebook page grew was that every day I would open up the analytics, the Facebook insights and see like what every single post, how much reach had given. And that is how we learned what our fans, the people who liked our page loved. And we would give them more of what they loved and right. less of what they didn't. Sure. And through that process, we realized that some of our like best performing um, spots for social media were in the middle of the night. And so I dove into that. Like, like I saved like our best stuff stuff for our one a.m. spot because that was the absolute best spot on Quirky Mama was one a.m. Interesting. And now I'm giving away all my secrets. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but the um, and so I was like, why is that? And you know, it you know, sure there's that mom here in America that's up in the middle of the night with their kids. Um, you know, like maybe feeding a baby, trying to reach out, trying to find some you know some connection, but. Yeah, there's also a whole world out there that we often just forget. Yeah, no doubt. And the crazy thing is, is the more we looked into it, the more we realized <laughs> how much alike we are. <laughs> like if you're raising kids on the other side of the world or you're raising kids on this side of the world, it is the same process. Right. We want the same things for our children. We want the same things for ourselves. We want our same things for our families. And like, there's a universal connection there, mm -hmm. which is why I'm so like passionate about connecting with other people. Because if we all got to know each other, like there would be no division mm -hmm. because there, every, like there is a universal good out there that when you get to know people, it just gives you strength to go on. And, and I think that's one of the things that concerns me about social media in general is a lot of people feel like they're making connections but they may not make, be making deeper connections mm -hmm. or they may be brushing through those deeper connections because it's just easier to scroll yeah sure and so if we can you know layer on those deeper connections and have them in, in a positive space I think that's what's going to change the world mm, i agree with you so much we are so in tune when it comes to that just we are everyone's dealing not dealing with but we're the same right we're the, we're, the, we're the same on so many levels and and it is unfortunate but it's just it's it's, it's unfortunate that most people don't get outside of their box yeah. right this this you know even even, even my wife my, my wife doesn't doesn't watch my show very often so she might not ever know that i said this about her but when i <laughs> when i met her like she had never been anywhere right like she was born in paris kentucky she grew up in paris kentucky she still lives in paris kentucky she doesn't want our kids to ever leave paris kentucky <laughs> she she had never been anywhere when i met her i on the other hand had traveled and lived in 17 different states and so on and so forth right and and so it's unfortunate that when we include, when we stay inclusive like that, we don't really see the the thirty thousand foot view, which is from thirty thousand feet, we're all the same, right? It's so true, and I, you know, I think it's. I really love the thirty thousand view kind of point. 
I think life in general is about perspective, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be stepping back and kind of looking at the big picture of the connections you have, but also that's what got me through the day. And one of the reasons why I was so blessed to kind of fall into blogging is that when you're in the trenches of being a mom <laughs> and you're standing in the kitchen and there's pee on one side of the kitchen and you know oatmeal on the wall on the <laughs> right. other side of the kitchen yes. and then and when you have more than three someone's always screaming no doubt and you're <laughs> you're like you think to yourself i used to be a capable human being and now i'm completely out of control All right <laughs> But if you can, at that moment, step back, <laughs> go up to 30,000 feet, look down on the ridiculousness of the predicament that you have gotten <laughs> yourself into. Right. I mean, willingly. Right. <laughs> I mean, I wanted these children. And um, <laughs> you, I mean, it can be such a breath of of fresh air mm -hmm. because if in the moment of the ridiculousness instead of a reaction where you can take that deep breath and just like laugh yeah. <laughs> because you know the next thing that's going to happen is the dog is going to be in the middle of that and there will be pee paw prints everywhere in the house before you can even sneeze yeah no doubt <laughs> so like <laughs> You might as well step back and enjoy it because it's better entertainment than you're going to have when they're teenagers. I'm just saying. <laughs> I agree 100%. You are spot on in, in regards to that. We've, you know, obviously we've got tons of them and my wife is always cleaning up, you know, there's always something. Last, <laughs> there's always something last night, my house. wife was breastfeeding this child and she looks down and all of a sudden there's green all over and she's like what is green and she reaches in and the baby had a piece of a green crown in her <laughs> mouth <laughs> and, she's breastfeeding. and that's just that's just how it is but you're right if you can just sit back and laugh right sit back laugh get that perspective in place and just realize that it's all chaos but it's all good right it's all mm -hmm. it's all good it's all god it's all life and, and and life overall can be amazing from the right perspective if we look at it the right way look at that starbucks mug i love that thing right there it's big <laughs> on your page and and you and i could talk for hours and hours and hours but we have to respect people's mornings routines so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up here fairly quickly but on your page you have quirky mama adventures family food live drawing with natalie coach madeline kids in the kitchen with grace and blake i think that is i can't remember i think right. so <laughs> parenting discussions toddler hairstyles story time recipes like how do you keep up with all of this and parent and travel and still keep it so like real like, I feel like it's you. I don't feel like I'm, you know what I mean? Like you're, you keep it really connected. How do you balance all that? So I'm like extremely lucky that I have the most amazing team of moms from literally around the world that help me. And the point of everything that happens on Quirky Mama is to be real and to be positive and show the silver lining in every situation. And so you know, so many of those shows are just families that just wanted to share something. And it and it's just heartwarming to see, you know, people, you know, my one of the girls that I've worked with for a really long time, she's out of Turkey. I'm, you know, I got to meet her one time in person, but you know, we had made those connections online over the years um across the world. And if that's it because I could see her heart in everything she did. Right, right. Well, it's beautiful. I, I I love it, and I love how you're showcasing other people, right? As as well, you're giving them an opportunity to share and pour into you know pour into others and to serve other people. It's not just like I'm Holly Homer, quirky mama. <laughs> look at me. Everyone else, stay away. Like you that know. would be super boring, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. I think I saw you like try to ride an aluminum thing and fall into the water. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, every once in a while. Yeah. Water. 
<laughs> you can see me do crazy things every once in a while because I love to try new stuff and it usually goes very poorly. <laughs> I just, you're standing in two feet of water with the life vest on and the video ends with you guys got to go see this video it's on youtube but the video ends with holly going i'm taking this life vest off <laughs> yes my husband is all about safety <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it love it listen holly you're clearly you're an outside the box thinker clearly right like how do you push through and we talked about that you talked about this a little bit with your morning routine how do you push through from thought to like taking action, putting yourself out there, no shame, just being you, whether it's silly, embarrassing, whatever. I know a lot of people struggle with putting themselves out there. So how do you push through that from thought to action? So, I mean, you have to do it. Like if, if it's in your brain, you, it's going to be in your brain forever until you get it out. <laughs> yeah, so true. you can just let it circle and drive you insane, or you can just do it. And the thing is, and I don't know who said this, but someone said this recently at a conference I was at, and they said, be okay with starting small. And um, I thought, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful because so many of us are so worried about, well, like no one will see it. Thank God, because you're going <laughs> to suck at it for a while. <laughs> I mean, it's actually just take it for me every once in a while i'm like ah like i wish i had a small community because i want to try this out and then i'm like get over yourself because the thing is people are attracted to the journey mm -hmm. and they will identify with the journey way more than with the destination and so when you can show people that you are going for it even though you look ridiculous and you're going to you're going to look ridiculous for a while and you're going to fail and you're going to look miserable let me give you another little secret. When you fail on the internet, it's called authenticity. Yeah. And so people are super attracted to that. So um, fail and fail often because those steps, those baby steps that you take are going to lead you to clarity of where you need to go. And there is no clarity without action. So in order to get those, those, those thoughts that are in your head that will not go away unless you take action, you have to take action. I mean, and that, by the way, those thoughts will, I don't want to discourage anyone, but those thoughts will be like new thoughts will come in and you'll have to do those too. But, right, right. but that's all, that's the whole baby steps process. Yeah. I, I, I love that you, people are attracted to the journey and the authenticity of it, right? Fail and fail often. Very, very, very strong, very powerful, powerful words. You're a powerful human being doing amazing things out there. And so I want to do something real quick and then, and then we'll let our, let our friends get to work and get to all the things that they need to do this morning. But before we go, I'd like to put you up on a mountaintop. Okay. We're going to put Holly Homer. You're on a mountaintop and all of civilization, everybody, all of civilization is there and they're cheering holly 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 or maybe they're going quirky 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 i'm not sure but they're cheering for you and you have two minutes you have two minutes to drop some practical pra practical application wisdom on them something that they can take away and they can use in their life today this week this month what are you going to tell them i need you to look inside your heart and figure out where you're going. Mm. It's there. Mm. And so many of you are just pushing it down and you're thinking you ha that you're stuck, that you're stuck somewhere because of a choice that you made. It might be you went to college for a certain career and now you're stuck there. You are not stuck there. <laughs> there is no rules to this life. Mm. This life is the one you have and this is the one that you need to make the best of it. So if you feel like you need to do something different, then I need you to start on that today because we don't know what tomorrow brings. But I do know that if today you start on something in a direction that your heart is leading you to, that 13 years from now, you are going to be in a place that you are much more comfortable in and that you're supposed to be. There's a reason why those thoughts are in your head and in your heart. It's because you're supposed to do something and you're supposed to start it today. Mm, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Seek in your heart, search in your heart and figure out 
where you're going. I like how you said there are no rules. There, there's no rules. This there is aren't. There really aren't. We make them up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and then we live by them and then we're mad. Like, stop. There's no rules. <laughs> I love it. Holly, you are clearly, clearly this uniquely made child of God doing amazing things out there in the world. Every These decisions that you're making, your discipline that you're staying with, the books that you're writing, the blogs, your Facebook page, all of those things are making a massive impact on, on your friends, your family members, your co-workers. And this morning, you've made a massive impact on me and my Rising Grind family. And I, for one, absolutely love you for it. I'm so thankful that you came on our show this morning. Miss Holly Homer, you're amazing. Thank you so much for this. This is great. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. If you'll do me a favor, will you hang out here in the green room for just a second? I'm going to say will. goodbye to uh, our Facebook friends here and then I'll come right back, okay? Maybe, maybe I can pull this off. I'm like you, I'm not most technically savvy. <laughs> wow, 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 that was the one and only amazing Holly Homer. What great takeaways, what amazing energy, and what a, just an incredible human being, right? Like search your heart. Where are you going? Those thoughts are not going to go away. Those things that are in your mind that you keep going back to, that you keep feeling compelled to move towards. Today's the day. There are no rules. You are only stuck by the rules that you've created, the confines of your own mind. And that's just one of the many pieces of wisdom that we got from my new friend, Holly Homer, this morning. Do me a favor. If you haven't done so already, make sure you share this out. I want the world. More people need Holly Homer in their life. Also, do me another favor. Make sure you follow Holly. You can, uh, her page is The Quirky Mama on Facebook. You can follow that page. She also has a Holly Homer page. I'm sure you could friend her there as well. But make sure you blow her up and give her a big time rise and grow. Ride. Welcome throughout the day as you're watching this show on replay. Reach out and let her know how much you appreciate what she's done. With that said, if you need more, any more episodes of Hashtag Rise and Grind, you can go to glennlundy.com. Also, if you need some Rise and Grind gear, feel free to go to glennlundy.com. But most importantly, is will you do me a huge favor? Will you just have an amazing, over-the-top, phenomenal weekend and then come back here again Monday morning at 5.30 a.m.? Because we're going to do this all over again on Hashtag Rise and Grind. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Stay woke.